Number 7. Akame Gakiro Akame Gakiro tells the story of a group of assassins called Night Raid who go around killing the corrupt nobles in their kingdom to protect the poor. Think of a much darker version of Robin Hood with magic. Tatsumi, the main character, gets drawn into this group after inadvertently staying at the house of some nobles who enjoy torturing their guests to death. The pluses. The character death rate in the series is quite realistic given the dangerous work that's being undertaken, and the main characters you've grown attached to are prone to die off. This is in great contrast to a lot of shonen manga where you only get the death of one good guy every 200 chapters or so. Fights become much more engaging to read when you know there's a chance a good guy won't win. Action scenes in this manga are also very well done. The minuses. Plot is a bit on the light side and often plays second fiddle to the action. Also, not all the characters are quite as well developed as they could be, though personally I blame that on the fact that many of them don't live long enough to be properly developed. Number 8. Akagami no Shiri Yuki Hime, or Red Haired Snow White. This story is set in a medieval-esque world where apparently having red hair is exceedingly rare. As a result, when Prince Number 1 discovers our protagonist, Shira Yuki, a red-haired pharmacist, he decides to take her as a concubine. Repulsed by this idea, she flees into a forest of a neighboring kingdom where she encounters Prince Number 2, who takes a shine to her and helps her escape. The story then continues with Shira Yuki's various adventures in her romance with Zen, the aforementioned Prince Number 2. The pluses. It has a strong female lead that isn't overly sexualized or crazy violent, and that's kind of refreshing. Also, despite being a shoujo manga, stuff actually happens in it other than relationship dramas, and it could actually stand on its own merits if all the romance was removed from it. Not something I could say about most other shoujo manga I've read. The minuses. Most of the action scenes are pretty minimally illustrated, and while action obviously isn't the focus of this story, it's not shonen after all, it could still be even better if they were given slightly more time. The dialogue can also occasionally be rather dry, which is unfortunate because it detracts from the humor in this series. Number 9. Memories of Eminon. This is a sci-fi story about a girl who inherits all the memories of her ancestors, all the way back to when life first appeared on Earth. It is told from the point of view of a young man who encounters her on an ocean liner bound for Japan. Pluses and minuses. This story is very short, and so the analysis will be as well. The manga is very artsy, and the story is good for making you think, but not exactly engaging. Come to it expecting exploration of concepts, not a well-developed story. Also, while this story is short, it is completely released so you can read it in one sitting. Number 10. World Embryo The story of World Embryo is set in an alternate version of modern-day Japan where there is a secret battle going on between strange monsters called Kanju and Flag, an organization created for the sole purpose of destroying them. Kanju ride electrical waves and enter humans like a virus, turning them into new Kanju. Miku is living the life of a normal high schooler until one day he accidentally gets involved in the middle of a battle between Kanchu and some members of FLAG, which leads to his own involvement in the conflict. The pluses. With an interesting world, well-developed characters, a strong plot, and of course well-illustrated action scenes, World Embryo does pretty much everything someone could want for a shonen series, except fan service. And you know what? I'm perfectly happy that this series doesn't have fan service. The minuses. While generally I liked the story, there were some plot twists that introduced unnecessary complications to it. And one of my favorite characters became evil, but yeah, that's just a personal gripe. Also, parts of the story can get rather dark and depressing, which can be quite wearing on the reader. And that brings this series to an end. Thanks for listening. Feel free to comment and let me know what you think. Also, if you like these videos, please subscribe. Cheers!